everybody to get what they need set up here. Uh, all right, just today, a couple things. Uh, Nick Vanette was out. That's a veteran rest day for Nick. Um, he also will not play in the game on Saturday. The other two veterans that won't play in the game Saturday are Simmons and Landry. Both will not play. Everybody else will suit uh, and play some part of that game. As far as injuries go, that's uh, new. Leroy Watson uh, had a knee, a small knee issue. He's week to week. He'll be out for the game. Uh, Cedric Gray had a shoulder, did not practice today. Uh, he's questionable to play in the game. We'll see what the next couple days bring for him. Uh, Caleb Farley is out with a hamstring. He'll likely be out uh, for a few weeks. Uh, Jojo Doman had a low back uh, issue yesterday. He sat today. He's questionable for the game. We'll see again, like Cedric, what the next couple days bring uh, for him for the game. Other than that, the playtime plan uh, for the preseason game against the 49ers is uh, our ones will play uh, to start the game. Uh, they'll all dress. They'll all play. Uh, like to let them go roughly a series or two, depending on how those series go. Um, and then those guys will be out. Uh, from that, from the lineup, and, and the rest of the guys will take over from there. So uh, you will see our ones uh, outside of uh, outside of uh, Jeffrey and, and Harold on defense, and the guys that have been out will be out. So there's no change in those guys' status; they will also be out. Um, and then we'll we'll play a little football. Can't wait. Uh, with that, I'll let you guys fire away. What do you want to see out of the first team offense that they've been out here working, obviously, against the defense? What do you want to see out of them as they go against a different team? Yeah, I would like to see a good operation in and out of the huddle, no issues with the play clock, no sloppiness in terms of getting lined up and knowing where to go. Um, it's a chance for them for the first time to operate in a stadium. You know, with without coaches standing around, everyone's on the sidelines. So just want to see good operation. I'd like to see uh, us move the ball well. You know, I'd like to see us move down the field. Ideally, you'd love to get a eight play, 10 play drive, let them feel, you know, real football for, for a good drive and end with a touchdown. Uh, that would be the goal. Uh, obviously, you know, you don't just get to script it out that way. But um, yeah, that would be a perfect scenario would be to get eight to 10 plays and, and score a touchdown and look sharp doing it. Um, other than that, you know, if things don't go great, then I'd like to see how they bounce back and respond and, and be able to bounce back from, from some negative, from some adversity early in the game. So uh, either way, we'll get some good out of it, um, but, but looking for those guys to look sharp when they take the field. We will we will hold Stonehouse from uh, the preseason game this week. Uh, we'll, we'll, it's an ongoing conversation. I know he would like to uh, punt in a preseason game. You know that's sort of the uh, last step, if you will, before he feels ready to play football. Um, so we'll have that conversation. That is certainly on the table for him at some point before the preseason is over to to get a live kick um, and just feel being back on the field again. So. Yeah, he's been he's been doing really well. I've been happy with who he's at. He feels good. Um, he's been punting enough in practice. He's that that part's coming along nicely. So I think we're in a good spot. Is there a butterfly or two for you? I don't maybe an extra little butterfly or two first as a, as a head coach versus play caller. Yeah, sure, of course. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. Yeah, I'm. Uh, it's more excitement than it is a butterfly. Um, just to be able to, to take the take the field as the head coach, the Tennessee Titans for the first time in, in a in a game action and um, and calling plays and that's a huge part for me and, and for our staff is you know this is a preseason for us too and, and we got to iron out communication and uh, from from our game management people upstairs to the coaches on the field to how the flow is going to work on both sides of the ball for me jumping back and forth and calling the plays it's it's going to be really good for me I'm excited about that part but um, that's the that's the beauty of the preseason is we get to we get three shots to iron it all out before it counts uh, for real so uh, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm really excited uh, like I said probably more more excitement than than butterflies necessarily but uh, I can't wait you'd like to see Mason and Malik or is the yeah. game dictate that a little bit? No, I, I'd like to see a lot of them. You know, I'd like to see both of them uh, play well. There, there'll there be a point we'll, um, you know, we'll probably let those guys kind of flip-flop so they each get a, a fair shot with, with the you know, the twos or the threes, they'll kind of take some turns. Uh, what this game will be pretty straightforward, probably the next two. Um, we'll get some more kind of mixed match of reps so they can showcase themselves well and they both get an equal opportunity too so um, those guys are both going to play they're going to play quite a bit um, they're going to play a lot in the preseason uh, it'll be good for both of them and um, I'm excited to watch those guys play as well first team I'll only get a drive or two is the plan to script those drives or are you going to kind of call it to get more uh, script is a loose term you know early on we'll have we'll have some openers some early calls that I think that uh, I'll, I'll have conversations with Will over the next two days about the things that he feels really good with, comfortable with, ex executing, um, calling all that stuff. So uh, to some degree, it will have some script feel. It won't be like a normal regular season game where you're, you know, you're doing 
the, the, the first 15 and all that stuff. It'll be a little bit different than that, but um, there will be some semblance of, of an opener's script for our guys so they kind of know what's coming and, and what we're trying to get done. Mentioned to Andre Sweat yesterday. Where have you seen seen him improve the most throughout training camp? Uh, he's just he's getting so much better understanding blocking schemes, uh, how to defeat blocks. It's it's not just him using his his big body uh, just to win physically. Now he, you're starting to see him settle in and understand uh, his role in the defense and where he fits um, in the run game and the pass rush. That part's been really cool. He's he's made a ton of plays over the last two practices. Uh, I think he just continues to get better at a rapid rate, and so um, that's exciting. I'm excited about that. He's he's done a really nice job. Um, you know, obviously his for uh, guys his size, you know, you're always worried about you know playing five, six, seven plays in a row. So the conditioning part um, is kind of an ongoing process to be ready to to go play a, a drive um, and not have to come out very often. So that's that's sort of the goal for him is to to be in shape to play ten plays and. You know, hopefully not 10 plays, hopefully it's three, but um, that's kind of where we're headed with him. What's your overall philosophy on that? that there, there are a lot of defensive coaches, defensive line coaches who think that there's a limit to how many guys at plays a guy yeah. can play any guy before they're diminishing returns. And that's that's correct. I think that's the overall philosophy is correct, um, where you, you want guys to be fresh for the course of a season, so you do need to be able to rotate. They're, he's not going to play every snap of every game, just like Jeff won't. Um, but when they got to bow up and play and be in shape, they got to be ready for that role. But certainly the division of labor amongst the D-line is an important component um, to keeping guys fresh and making sure they're not playing too many snaps. Um, so there, there always is going to be a rotation. Is there a general number of consecutive plays? I think for like a preseason game, I think you want to see him play a lot. In general, you're probably talking four or five plays uh, at, at most. Most guys play in a row. Um, and there's some guys that are freaks that can play longer. But for the most part, that four to five play, and then obviously situationally the third down, second and longs where you're rushing the passer might change. So, um, yeah, you want to keep them as fresh as possible. What do you feel like the right side of the line is right now? Are you happy with where they are or do you want to see more improvement? Uh, I, I think I'm, I'm content with, with what we've seen so far, but I think we need to see more improvement too. I think it's twofold. Um, I think Nick coming off the, uh, a long layoff from the spring into now has, has done a nice job. I think he's continuing to get better. He missed a ton of work in, in the offseason technique-wise um, that he's sort of catching up to. Uh, he's done a nice job, but I think we still need to get better there. I think Dylan stepped in and done a nice job. But, you know, I think the whole line as a whole, I think there's always room for that improvement. And, and those guys on the right side are no different than the left side. Those, there's still plenty of things that JC's got to get better at as a rookie. So uh, I don't want to single one side out over the other. And I think there's plenty of room for improvement across the board. Um, with that being said, I am pleased with the progress we've made and, and where we're at uh, with some time to go still. So that's a good thing. With though, like Peter Skronsky, who mm -hmm. when you don't talk about him a lot, a lot, maybe that's a good thing. And he seems to have taken a next step yep. this year, and he says he feels good with the weight he's put on too. Yeah, he looks really good. Um, he's had a really nice camp so far. Um, I've been I've been very pleased with where he's at. Um, again, there's plenty of things that technique-wise that he can keep getting better at, but. Of what he's shown so far is is what I would have expected for a player of his caliber, and um, he's settled in pretty nicely. He's starting to get more and more comfortable uh, within the scheme, within the techniques, and um, that part's been good to see. I think his size looks good. He looks strong. He's powerful. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm pleased with where he's at. With rookie like Dave Martin Robinson, who's, who's made plays up here, yeah. how much do you look forward to these opportunities to see if it really translates? Yeah, it's a huge part. You know, those guys that that play. You know, you're playing against another team, a different scheme. Um, to see guys produce in the game is, is can they take it from practice to game? Do they still show up um, when you're playing real football? And that's always that's for every position. Um, but certainly tight ends have an opportunity to they get catch and run opportunities. You get to see them really block when when guys are trying to tackle the backs, and it's just you get a much better feel for where those guys are at. So uh, really critical for those young tight ends. This game is um, all these preseason games are um, to see what what we've if what we've seen on the field is 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 who they are in a game, and that's. You know, that's an important part of it is can you translate it into, into game time. So I'm um, excited to see that. For a loop here for today and, uh, are, and are you a little thin inside? What's like, that? A good, good day for Gifford yeah. today. And, and are you a little thin inside? Could you be okay numbers-wise? Uh, I think we'll be okay numbers-wise. Um, again, none of, the, none of the guys that missed today are, are considered anything long-term and hopefully both be ready for the game. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's good to see Luke. Luke made an unbelievable play in 7-on-7. Seven seven. I thought uh, Will put a good ball out there, and I didn't know Luke could jump that high. Uh, he kind of got off the ground pretty good to go get that ball, which was good to see. Um, I think our, those young linebackers are, are coming along, too. All, all the guys, they're getting more comfortable in the scheme. They're learning how to play more. Um, so those, that's another group, along with those young tight ends, and I'm excited to see what, what it looks like for real when they're actually being able to get cut loose and hit and tackle. What do 
have you been seeing from the edge rushers beyond Harold and Arden, the guys that uh, may be part of that rotation mm -hmm. or will have to step up once Arden? Yeah, gone? it's it's. Uh, I think the one that the one guy I have to single out that's been fantastic is uh, Jalen Harrell. Um, he has come in and and done everything right. And that's a that's a big step for a young player. Uh, and then he's actually shown real ability to rush. And so again, he's a he's another player in a live action. We'll see if it translates to what it's looked like on pra on the practice field. But I've um, been really impressed with what he's done so far. Um, he's been physical as an outside linebacker. He's shown rush ability. Um, he's made plays when he's had opportunities to make plays. So everything about uh, Jalen has been really really exciting. So. Uh, Put him on the list of guys that I'm excited to go watch play on Saturday. What have you made a comment over the weekend about how this team will run the football? Mm -hmm. And with the two different running backs that you have, as opposed to giving it to one guy 28 times, how do you envision getting both backs in rhythm so that you can continuously run the football the way you want? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, generally speaking, you try to find, you know, when you go into a game, you highlight a handful of plays that, that they like, you know, the, the they're both different style runners. Uh, Tajay has plays that he likes. Tony has plays that he likes. And so you sort of star those plays and you put their names on them. And so when you call those, um, you make sure that they get those carries that they feel good about. So that's how you naturally split the, the, the labor in the running back room. And then sometimes when a guy starts feeling it, you can see a guy feel it, you just keep giving it to him. You know, keep giving him opportunities to carry it. Um, we're going to use those guys plenty uh, all across the formation uh, in the pass game and in the run game. So they're fun tools to have. Uh, because they can do so many different things. But the biggest key is just making sure that you get them the run, especially early in the game, that you divide it up the way that they feel good and you kind of see who gets hot. Um, you can stick with a hot hand or you can just stay with your rotation as far as uh, the runs that they've sort of selected and we've talked about as, as the ones being their comfort zone for the running back. So uh, that's probably the best way I can explain that process. Ideally, what percentage would you want in a perfect world of a, the mix between the run and the uh, I mean, in a perfect world, in a perfect world, it, you, you'd like to be probably right around 50-50. Um, it's usually not the case, you know, down and distance-wise and all that stuff. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's probably the, the ideal. Um, you hope to be able to marry your play-action game with your run game well enough so that, that teams don't really know what's coming. Um, that, that can go by formation, under center, in the gun, however that looks, uh, to make sure that, that we're marrying up our action game our naked game, our boot game, and our screen game with the run game. So you kind of package it all together. Um, you know, the reality of it is, is that, you know, you get into spots where we're throwing the balls a little more advantageous. And so you're going to get to places where it might be more 60-40, depending on the game. Um, but the, the perf perfect world, ideal world, you'd love to be right around 50-50. So a defense doesn't necessarily know exactly what you're going to do in what situation. What do you think about so wanting to see just the guys take it from here out on the field? What do you say to the guys specifically, like some of the second and the third team guys who like, you know, their roster spots up for grabs and they're trying to get there? What do you say to those guys? Well, there's there's two things, you know. One, they're they're fighting for a job to make our team, and and that's that's the most important part. Um, the secondary part is they're they're also putting their resume on tape for the rest of the league. You know, everyone's watching these preseason games, uh, and when there's there's cuts, there's roster transactions across all 32 teams, practice squad spots, team spots. There may be. T people on our team that other teams have earmarked that said if these guys get cut loose we're going to take a, a run at them in the in the practice squad so they're trying to perform their best for themselves to try to make our team and they're also putting their resume on tape for the rest of the league for 32 other opportunities or 31 other opportunities they could have so um, they're just trying to show their best version of themselves uh, out there for everyone watching the game and, and hopefully that's enough for them to find a job. Charlie Wiley last year he was, he was pretty quiet, and this year he's definitely talking a little bit more on the offense. Yeah, it's great. Is, 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 that, is that a sign generally that confidence is, yeah. is growing? I think generally. I mean, usually guys that are um, – occasionally you have a guy that doesn't care. He's going to talk no matter what. That's rare. Um, but, yeah, usually guys that, that are – they're doing less thinking about what they have to do and how they have to do it, that they enjoy the, the process of running their mouth a little bit. Um, and so you see that. The guys that are confident tend to be the ones that, that talk quite a bit. Um, and I think that's a good thing. I like seeing that confidence out of Josh. I think he's had a really nice camp. Um, so he's earned the right, if you will, to, to be able to, to run his mouth a bit. And um, it's been good. It's good for the spirit. It's good for the, good for the competition. But it's been, that's generally a sign of confidence that a guy feels good about doing his job. Is Harold shown, shown enough that he could conceivably be a three-down guy? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Harold's Harold's camp has um, quietly been been really fantastic. I mean, he's. Oh, I thought you said Harold. Yeah, no. Uh, Jalen Harold. Harold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's shown the ability to be a three-down outside linebacker. He can he can rush. He's physical against the run. Um, those things have shown up. Now, again, we'll see 
as, as we get against different competition, uh, what that looks like. But everything so far says that he's got the requisite skill set to be able to, uh, to play that role. I'll take one more. Coaching staff's kind of have different philosophies when it comes to the back end of a roster and what sets a guy apart to make the 53. Mm -hmm. I guess how much does special teams play a factor for you versus maybe a guy who has a skill set that can help you on offense or defense that you don't have elsewhere in the room? I was hoping to wait to have these conversations till the end of the month, but um, yeah, that's a great that's a great point. And um, one of the things that makes it hard is is where does the value come for the player for us? Is he a guy that we think can really contribute on offense uh, in a major role that would then diminish his ability to participate on special teams to some degree? Um, the general battles that you see are, are who's your returners? You know what what guys are returning and what roles? Um, you're lo you, you look at your fifth, sixth receivers. Um, you know, the special teams roles come out of your fourth and fifth linebackers, your fourth and fifth safety. Um, so those are the questions that you got to ask and, and the evaluations we have to make over the next few weeks is at those sort of bubble spots where your special teams contributors come, come from, um, how do you determine who's going to be able to help us the most offense and defense and still play a, a very critical role on special teams? And so uh, that's where those roster battles are taking place is, you know, not necessarily who's going to be uh, the best safety for for the backup spot on defense, it's it's who's going to be the best safety for that spot, and hopefully contributes as a core special team player. So, those are really challenging evaluations and hard conversations. Uh, those are that's the hardest part of, of making the roster. Yeah, how does that kind of affect? Uh, I guess what a guy is looking to showcase or what you're looking to see out of them in a preseason game. Like, yeah. if you're a wide receiver trying to make the team. Um, do they have to be able to show that special team's ability? It, like a touchdown catch might not matter as much as a kick return tackle. Yeah, that's that's that is exactly what it is. I mean, those guys got to show up on special teams in a game, um, and you know if they're in a position to make tackles, to make them, to make whatever the technique is to play it, um, they need to perform equally as well on special teams. I think the the old story that is probably out there all over the world at this point, everyone's seen it, is this Terrell Davis. Uh, when you know he runs out on that kickoff down in Tokyo, and, and he's about ready to quit, and uh, he runs out on a kickoff and and makes an unbelievable play, and what that does for those guys is they make plays on special teams, they get more opportunities to play on offense and defense because they're on your roster. So we're trying to find a way to use them, um, and so the best thing that advice I give to all these guys is if you can find a way to make a play on special teams, it's going to generally help your chances to find a way under the roster. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. I'm not that great. I'm since your mother a house, uh, take us through that experience and the feelings you had being able to provide for it like that. Um, well, first, I got to say I thank God for that. I mean, I worked hard to get to this opportunity to even get her a house, and, you know, she finally got her dream home. And like I said, I can't do nothing but thank God. How much are you looking forward to, you know, maybe your first taste of NFL game action Saturday night? I mean, I'm excited. I mean, it's football, you know, and – I do this for a living, so I really can't wait for Saturday. It's going to be fun. How, how much you feel like you've gotten better? How much your confidence has grown during the course of the last couple uh, of years? My confidence has always been there. I mean, I am who I am. Uh, I, like I said, I just can't wait to get out there and showcase my skills at the next level. Sorry. Uh, Coach was saying even the last couple of days, you've seen you make several excellent plays. Has there been anything you felt, you know, take a jump in the, in the last couple of days even? Uh, just staying on my conditioning, you know what I mean? Just keep pushing and pushing myself when I'm tired. So I would just say my condition is just getting better and better every day and start making more. How much progress have you made in that? Coach was talking not just about you, but in general about linemen handling five, six plays before you come out. I mean, I'm, I'm used to it. Uh, I did it at Texas, you know, and just coming here, you know, I just got to get back into that groove, you know, because, I mean, when you're doing a draft and all that, you're not actually training for, like, football, you know what I mean? So it's just great getting back in football shit. What's Tracy preach to you every day on the practice field? Just be the best you can be and just go hard. With that conditioning, you know, Coach Wilson, he has said that, you know, one of the things he wants you guys to do is run to the ball and get conditioning that way. Is that something you experienced at Texas? Or yeah, 100%. Thing? I mean, when you're a D-lineman, that's all your life. You know, when you, from junior league to NFL, it's run to the ball when you're a D-lineman. But from a conditioning perspective, like doing that for conditioning specific. I oh, yeah, yeah, it's for conditioning. Yeah, yeah, it's just getting yourself in, uh, getting yourself in better shape. What else is part of your conditioning routine? Like, what do you do on a daily basis to keep up? Right. Uh, just like after I walk through, I do like a little extra walking. 
Yes, sir. Running with a couple other big guys after practice yesterday. How often do you do that, and how much does that happen? Uh, we'll do it often, like when when it, when we do it, you know. But I usually get mine like after walkthrough at the end of the day. Just give me extra walking in. What kind of distance? How much? How much walking? I'll do like 15, <laughs> like 15, 20. Just keep it at that. Your draft process, you told, you talked to us about wanting to keep your weight at a certain level and wanting to, you know, use that to, you know, slim down a little, get into your best shape. Are you where you want to be right now, weight wise? Oh, I feel great. You know, I feel great, and I'm just gonna take it day by day. But I like, feel great. How much you like one on one period there? And I, th I think you only got one rep today. How much would you like more reps at that if you could get them? Um, I mean, it's a lot of us and we work in different things. So honestly, I get the reps when, you know, so I don't really know that answer. <laughs> you guys always talk about the difference between practice and games. How much are you looking forward to this game as something of a learning experience as a rookie? Um, well, first, I want to say um, I can't wait to run out the tunnel. That's one of my biggest things, you know. All the fans going to be out there in Nissan Stadium and my first NFL game, you know what I mean? Just preseason, whatever, you know, it's just it's going to be amazing. I just can't wait to run out that tunnel. Coach Rocker said that he's been really impressed with what you've been doing in the film room as well as what you do out here. What is it about the film room that you're learning and maybe you see a mistake on film and you immediately can correct that and not make that again? Right. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I went to UT. Very smart school, you know. And I don't know, I've just always been good in the film room and mean rooms, you know. Very intelligent guy, so. What would you know about Quandre what, uh, when you were at school at Texas and how cool to see another Texas guy come to the room? Right. It's great. I mean, Quandre is Quandre. He's goaded, you know what I mean? So just him coming from UT, uh, I seen him a couple times, like my uh, fifth year at Texas. He came in, do treatment and stuff, and I chopped it up with him, just asking about how the NFL is. And now we're on the same team, so it's pretty cool. I remember you, talking to you at the Senior Bowl about your bull rush, and you said something about how sometimes you don't even like to bull rush because it's not fair and you like working on some other stuff. I'm right. curious, getting out here, NFL competition, has that changed at all? Do you go back to the bull rush now? I mean, I bull rush here and there, you know. I'm getting just push the pocket, really, and everything's going to come to me. That's my main goal is pushing the pocket and doing whatever best for the team to win. You ever surprised you know, Andre, about the, the level of success you've had already? Say that again. Have you surprised yourself at all with the level of success you've had so far in the game? <laughs> nah. No, no. I mean, oh, like I say, I do this for a living. I mean, I'm a very confident guy in my skills. So it's just great being next to Jeff. I mean, you play next to Jeff, you'll be out there making some plays too, you know what I mean? So just playing next to guys like that and they, I mean, they just come to you. So. Are you disappointed at all that Jeff won't be there with you Saturday that he's not playing? Oh, no. I'm T-Sweat, man. You know, so. <laughs> did, you, did you hear the chatter before you were drafted, after you were drafted, about people wondering, like, he's got the talent, but is he going to be able to make it? And did you hear that? Did that motivate you at all? How do you feel about that? Um, that question. I mean, I tone it out, you know. I'm a mama's boy, everybody know that here. Um, I just go to my mom, chop it up with her, get everything off my chest with her, and I go go by my day. What does she tell you? You're going to have people that hate you. You're going to have people that love you. At the end of the day, just do what you do every day, and don't worry what people say. Thanks a lot. With a guy like Jeffrey Simmons every day in camp, kind of how does that build your confidence when you're winning some of those, and and how does that kind of help benefit you through camp? Yeah, I mean it's a blessing to have you know one of the best interior guys in the league, you know on your own team and be able to go against him in practice and, and have that level of competition because 
you know, it only makes you better. You know, there's, it only helps you grow your game and helps you improve. And, um, you know, that's a guy you're fortunate you don't have to go against on Sundays. And so you'd rather have someone like that in practice and get after it. But, you know, you got to take advantage of every rep against him because he's one of the best. Um, and you just got to enjoy that. How about your thoughts on Devondre Swift uh, early, early? Yeah, on? really impressed. He's exceeded my expectations, honestly. Um, you know, he's gotten after it in the run game. And, you know, in the past game, I've been impressed with him, too, and, and his ability to get to an edge. But, you know, obviously, you know, passes the look test totally. But, you know, there's not a lot of guys that have that size and speed um, and an ability to get to an engine pass pro and obviously run game you know he's as stout as could be um, you know that's a really that's a really tough tough two guys in the interior to move around um, and I think he's he's definitely exceeded everything I, I thought he'd be you wait for a guy like that to get tired and, and do you see what, what do you see about his endurance I think that's true of all all defensive linemen I would I wouldn't say it's specific to him um, but obviously you know everyone wears down a drive so like that that's always an advantage in the line but I haven't seen anything concerning or anything in that in that sense the ones are all going to go uh, on Saturday. I'm, I'm guessing you like the fact that you're going to get some time together in a game. Yeah, yeah. You always, you know, you, know, you can't really replicate the feeling of a game. Um, so you always take advantage of those reps that you do have in the preseason games, even if it's not a ton. Um, just the feeling of it and kind of gelling on a game stage, you know, at the stadium against a different opponent. I think you take advantage of that, and um, you know, we'll hopefully try to maximize the reps that we do get. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I think my place rank is back to a place where I want to be. Um, you know, obviously the weight helps with that, um, and, and you know, the off-season training. Um, so yeah, I do. Th I do think that's helped, and I think now it's just a matter of maintaining that through a season. To Sadiq when he left, or was that come as a surprise to a lot of guys? Yeah, you know, I, I wish him all the best. You know, obviously. Haven't heard time from him, but you know he's always going to be in my prayers, and he's always going to be a brother of mine. So, obviously, wishing the best. And things are shaping up with the line. A lot of it seems like your side of the line's been pretty consistent all the way through camp. You're plugging up the guys on the right side. How do you think it's gone as a whole? Just the whole group gelling. I think everyone's been really competitive, and obviously, you know, on the right side, there's been a few more guys rotating in and out. Um, you know, I think my mindset, my mindset is, you know, the expectation is always on the position. You know, it's it's always on. You know, what does the left guard do for the Titans? What does the right guard do? What does the right tackle? It's not necessarily like, what could Sadiq do? What can Dylan do? You know, what could I do? It's, there's a job to do when you play, out, play a position on the line. It doesn't matter who's in, and you have to meet that job. Um, and so I think that's what the mindset has to be on that side. And it doesn't matter who's in, you have to do the job of the right guard, right tackle. Peter, I know it's just your second preseason, but what are your thoughts as a younger guy about balancing reps versus getting reps and playing a lot in these games? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, obviously we have a lot of guys who need time, so everyone's got to play in, in some sense. But, you know, obviously, like I said, I kind of I don't feel like I'm at a point where, you know, it's only my second year. You know, I don't need to, like, not play at all in the preseason and stuff like that. You know, I, I think I need those in-game reps to get ready for week one because, you know, for me the worst thing to have in week one is to be the first time that I felt like a game situation. Um, so, you know, I appreciate the reps that I do get, and um, there's no complaints about having to be out there or anything. You know, I'm only a year two, so. Yeah. Not a big deal. Do you still feel like you're figuring out things about guard every day, or is it kind of a full comfort now where you don't feel like there's too much more to kind of? Yeah, I don't know if there's ever a time where you feel like I figured it out, you know, because the competition's always so good and there's always things to work on. But, you know, as I said before, I think the, the comfort level and just feeling a little bit, you know, more at place there and, and more comfortable is, is definitely improved. Uh, Wait the front there. Were you saying you got back to where you were before the appendectomy, or, or have you bad? I'm a little bit so heavier. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably eight or nine pounds heavier than I was even before the appendectomy. Um, so yeah, yeah. About three thirty ish. Yeah. Obviously, it's been out of your control, but that rotation there on the right side. How much does that kind of make it tougher? Just keeping from having that continuity that's so important for your group? Yeah, I mean, I think continuity is a big thing for a line. Um, you know, I don't think we're gonna, we're not gonna go through the season with guys, you know, rotating per se. Um, so it's just a matter of finding the guys who can get the job done and, and then developing the continuity from there. Um, but obviously, you know, you have the competition to find the right guys and that's what, that's what matters. And, um, you know, for me, there's not a whole lot of interaction with the right side from the left side, but in terms of Lloyd and, you know, his communication, it's good to have the same guys in there. And, um, you know, you do want that five as one mentality. Um, so, you know, once we kind of set who that is, you know, I think we're all we're going to gel and work hard. But everyone in our whole room has the same mentality and competitive attitude. So, you know, in terms of the intangible type of stuff, I don't think it should matter that much because we all have that 
we all have that drive. So. What is Will like in the huddle in terms of, is he all business? Does he joke around and lighten the mood sometimes? What's, what's he like when you guys are in the huddle? Do you call yeah, I mean, I've one thing I've noticed I think is his poise in the huddle from this last year to this year has improved so much, and that's not even to say that it was poor at all last year. But I just think he has a really, really great command of the huddle, and you know, it, we're in practice now, so you know, it's not necessarily the same as a game environment. Um, but I'm been impressed with his ability to communicate clearly um, and kind of command the huddle and command the checks at the line. I think it's been a really good job, and he's really improved at that. And you know, he kind of has that really strong NFL quarterback command of, of things, you know, kind of what you hear about like the great ones doing. I feel like he's got that in terms of how he acts in the huddle. How about JC, uh, just how he handles himself on a day-to-day basis? What, what's impressed you the most about him uh, he, first couple of months? He's got such a great attitude. I mean, he just, you know, he, you know, he makes mistakes and he grows and he just keeps working hard and he wants to get better every single day. And he's super, super competitive. You know, he's just got a great drive and competitiveness to him. You know, you can see it in the way he plays. Just he gets after guys, and um, you know, he's continuously wanting to get better. He's always texting me questions, you know, talking to Bill, and um, he's got the exact attitude you want of someone with his skill set in terms of constantly wanting to get better and just going out there competing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you.